All right, yesterday we were up to this point, the definition. F of g of x equals x and g of f of x equals x. So in example three, it says verify that f of x and f inverse of x are inverses of each other. Um, if it bothers you with this f inverse, we can just call it g of x. So verify means we're going to do f of g of x and g of f of x. So here we go. This is f of 1 third x plus 5 thirds. f of x says take 3 times the input minus 5. So I do 3 times the input minus 5. Well, I'm going to distribute the 3 and I get x plus 5 minus 5. So that's x. Then I'm going to switch the order to do g of f of x. So this is g of 3x minus 5. And the g function says take one third the input plus 5 thirds. I am going macaroni speed, so stay with me. You're going to distribute. You get x minus 5 thirds plus 5 thirds, which is x. So it verifies. All right, while you're trying to catch up with me, let me recap what we did yesterday. When we tried to find an inverse, we could switch the x and y values in a table, and that produced an inverse. With an equation, we could switch x and y in the equation and solve for new y, and the new y was the inverse. If you have a graph of a function, you can reflect it over the line y equals x, and it produces the inverse. The fourth thing is what we just started with today is if you look at f of g of x and it's x, and g of f of x is x, then it verifies that they're inverses, okay? Now, I know the question we had yesterday was, is it that f of g of x and g of f of x are equal to each other? And the answer is no. It's that they both equal x. All right, then, before we start example four, I need you to put a note down. In a word problem, we do not, or we don't, which the variables when we find the inverse, okay? We don't switch the variables like we do just in general with lines or parabolas or whatever else we're dealing with. But what you are going to do is you're just going to solve for the other variable because it doesn't make sense. Like if we look at example four, it says elastic bands can be used in exercising to provide a range of resistance. A band's resistance R in pounds can be modeled by R equals 3 eighths L minus 5, where L is the total length of the stretched band in inches. So it doesn't make sense to say I'm going to switch the length with the, re the number of pounds, okay? So, but what we will do is we're just going to solve this for the other variables. So I start by adding 5 to both sides. And then I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal to get the L alone. So L is equal to 8 thirds times R plus 5. Something else I want to mention is you don't put L with an inverse symbol. We just, L is the inverse. Okay, So it's different with a word problem. And letter B, it says use the inverse function to find the length at which the band provides 19 pounds of resistance. So the nice thing is it's set up the way that we need it. So this is 8 thirds times 24. Well that 24 is like 24 over 1. 3 goes into 24 8 times. It's 64. Remember to include units. In this case the length was measured in inches. Alright, we'll try one more word problem. Example five, a small company produces greeting cards. The cost C in dollars.
dollars of producing n greeting cards per month can be modeled by c equals 360 plus 0 0.60 n find the inverse of the model so that just means you solve for the other variable in a word problem and then divide by the 0.6 so n equals c minus 360 divided by the 0.6. Use the inverse function to find the number of greeting cards produced in a month in which the company's total cost to produce them was $615. So you want your calculators here. getting 425 and remember your units in a word problem if it's appropriate. Okay, 425. Any questions on word problems and how you do them differently? Good. All right, inverses of nonlinear functions. It says graph y equals x squared and it's inverse on the same graph. All right, well, let's start with y equals x squared. In chapter four, we spent the entire chapter on parabolas, and this is the parent function. So you should remember how to graph this. So it's a parabola parent function with the vertex at 0, 0. The inverse, you are just going to switch the x and the y values. And then we're going to plot that. So this would be 4, negative 2, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 4, 2. So this is really interesting because this is looks like a parabola on its side. Okay, so do you see how I came up with the inverse just by looking at my table? And I knew how to do y equals x squared. We're supposed to remember that. Now, Let's also use the tool that we had yesterday, where, remember I had the light switch, okay? If I take and I switch the x and the y, now you can begin to see things all weave together and connect. It's really neat. If I have x equals y squared from chapter 4, we learned how to solve quadratics. If it's an even power, it's a plus or minus root. So if I wanted to look and say that's f inverse of x, it's plus or minus the square root of x. Okay? So really, really neat to connect. All right, let's look at the next one. It says graph y equals x cubed. Okay, I know this one. Remember when we did our arms and we were doing our n behavior and I made you do some math aerobics with that. So we're supposed to remember this one. And if I just do a little bit of forward thinking, and think about if I'm going to switch the x and the y's, I'm going to need to go to 8 and negative 8 on the x-axis and y-axis, and I don't have enough space. So let's go ahead and go by twos everywhere, left, right, up, and down, we'll go by twos. So just be careful with it when you're doing these. So if I want to plot negative two, negative eight, I go left one and down four. But when I do negative one, negative one, that's only left a half, down a half. 
So this is the one that looks sort of like a snake. Okay, so there's your x cubed. Remember our n behavior. Okay, then the inverse, we're going to take our table, switch the x and the y's, and let's plot these. Negative 8, negative 2, well then three of the points are the same. And what's really neat about this one, I think you can see it a little bit more clearly, is that, do you remember how we talked yesterday, and I recapped it today, is that if you take a graph and reflect it over the line y equals x, it gives you the inverse. So you can really see this would flip up, this would flip up, you know, and vice versa. So then let's look at that equation, and if I switch x and y, then I would do the cube root of x. So that's your inverse function. All right, then let's look at example six. It says find the inverse of f of x equals x squared, but I'm going to restrict the domain. Remember how we've been talking about domain. I now want to make x greater than or equal to zero. So what that means is I know this is a parabola, but I'm saying x has to be greater than or equal to zero. So let's make a grid here. So if I plot 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, I'm actually just looking at the right piece, the right side of this graph when x is greater than or equal to 0. And I'll connect this all together in um, a moment. Then my inverse, let me get in a different color, yeah, it looks nicer. So if I do x and f inverse of x, this is 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2. So it's just the top piece of it. And you might be wondering, all right, that's weird. Why would we want to know how to do this? Well, do you guys remember from Algebra 1, and we reviewed it this year already, is something called the vertical line test. Does anybody remember what was the purpose of the vertical line test? Yeah, to determine whether or not your graph is a function. If it crosses through... A vertical line more than once is not a function. So here's what's interesting. Let me go back to screens here. So if I look at my y equals x squared, it passes the vertical line test. But its inverse fails, doesn't it? Now let's look at this one. If I chop the domain, the x squared piece passes, and the inverse passes. Something that you don't realize yet, and we're going to cover this towards the very end of this year when we do our trig, is we're going to talk about inverse trig. And we're going to have to adjust the domain in order to get it to work. Last year when you were in geometry, do you remember if you had like, you were solving those triangles or problems and it was sine x equals 0.2 and you guys pressed second sine or you did inverse sine. Well, there's a whole lot of mathematics behind it, but in geometry that's like as much as you get. And then at the end of Algebra 2, we'll understand why you're allowed to do what you do. Okay, So again, we're just laying a foundation right now. So we have something called the horizontal line test, okay? So you'll need to write this down if you didn't already. 
The inverse of a function is also a function if no horizontal line intersects the original function more than once. So the vertical line test is done to the original graph. The horizontal line test is done to the original graph, but it tells us about the inverse. So let's go back to our parabola here. If I do the, the vertical line test on x squared, it passes. But if you draw a horizontal line through that original graph, it fails. So it's telling me the inverse is not a function. Okay? All right, so let's look at example 7. It says consider the function f of x equals 2x cubed plus 1. So I should know, based on my end behavior, that it looks something like this. But I don't know how much of a wiggle it might have in the middle, but I at least know it's this. It says, determine whether the inverse of f is a function. So I want you to take out your graphing calculator, and I want you to go to your y screen, and I want you to enter 2x cubed plus 1. 2x cubed plus 1. Now, you may have messed around on your calculator or had some kind of funny window. Let's do zoom 6. And if I draw a horizontal line through it, it passes, right? It's only hitting it once. There's no, like, hill or valley where it might go through more than once. So is it a function? Yes. Because it passes the horizontal line test. Then it says find the inverse. So we're going to switch, and remember, f of x is a placeholder for y. So we're just going to make it x equals 2y cubed plus 1. We subtract the 1. You divide by 2. And if I want to undo a cube, I need to do a cube root. And then that's my inverse. And you are allowed to use y inverse or f inverse of x interchangeably. It doesn't matter. All right, just because of time with our shortened periods, we're going to skip example 8. It's the same as the last one. And I think you guys got that pretty easily. Example 9 says the average price P in dollars for an NFL ticket can be modeled by P equals 35T to the point 192 power, where T is the number of years since 1995. Find the inverse model that gives time as a function of the average ticket price. So this is a word problem. And you've got to remember in word problems we don't switch variables, we just solve for the other variables. So we're going to start by dividing by 35. And then we're trying to solve this for t. And what's interesting is students are, are usually very confused and say, I don't know how to do anything like that. When in fact, I've been filling your tool belt, okay? You've got these tool belts. And if I said to you, I had um, x cubed, whoops, sorry. If I told you x cubed equals 8, how would you do that? You would do the cube root, right? Now, the cube root, we learned, is to the 1 third power. And you'd finish it. If I had x to the 2 fifths power equals, say, 11, what would you raise it to to undo the 2 fifths power? Now think back here. You had 3 and you raised it to its reciprocal, to the 5 halves power. Okay, because those end up canceling. So guess what we're going to do? We're going to raise it, even though it's not very pretty, 
we're going to raise it to the 1 over 0.192. Do you see how you really did know how to do that? But it's almost like, you know, trying to get real obvious here that we had been doing it. So that's going to cancel. The only problem is, like in the back of the book, it's not going to leave a fraction with a decimal. So you're going to go to your calculator, and we're going to take 1 divided by 0.192, and that's about 5.2. So it's going to be T equals P over 35 to the 5.2 power. Okay? All right, we'll try another one like this because I thought these were a little bit tricky. Example 10 says the population of a town can be modeled by P equals 16,500 times T to the 0.15 power, where T is the number of years since 1998. Find the inverse model that gives the number of years as a function of the population. So all we're going to do is we're going to take the equation and solve it for t. So what would we start with? Good. Divide by 16,500. And then what exponent do I need to raise it to? 1 over 0.15. And what are you getting when you do 1 divided by 0.15? 6.7. Yeah, about 6.7. So this is t equals, so it's really weird, but weird but true. 